Okay, we tried to continue our interview in Patronostra Square, but then the private security um, made it quite difficult for us, as you saw in the footage. So, Steve, where we were, I think we were about to talk about Birmingham and your work up there. Yeah, yeah, I was just mentioning uh, uh, what's going on in Birmingham with the massive surveillance operation that's, that's been uh, uh, put in place to encircle um, 90,000 Muslim people in, in Birmingham. Uh, on the grounds that they, they, they're probably terrorist suspects. So what the police have done is instead of looking at suspects and they have more than enough powers to uh, place suspects under surveillance, they've got all sorts of measures that they can use. But what they've done is they've ignored suspects. They've said, well, let's just consider the idea that everyone's a suspect, yeah. particularly if you live in a, uh, a Muslim neighborhood. So that's what they've done. They've built a huge uh, ring of steel, well, two, in fact, over uh, all the way around two uh, mainly Asian Muslim neighbourhoods, yeah. and uh, such that you can't get in or out without being tracked and monitored, and and uh, they tried to pass it off. It's just as a big open prison, really. Exactly, it's you know free to come and go as you like, providing you're being videoed and recorded and databased. But Steve, surely if we have nothing to hide, we've got nothing to fear from the government, which is very moral and does good things. Surely, well. That, that's, a, that's a massive assumption because that assumes that the government, uh, the powers that be, whether it be the police, and then you've got you know ACPO, which I mentioned earlier, like the political police, uh, and the government of the day uh, are benign and benevolent and have our interests at heart, and they're going to protect us and look after us. And that, you know that while that may be the case on a particular given day, what about in 10 or 20 years' time? Um, we don't know who's going to be running government or, or what their ideals may be. And we're, we're giving them this huge infrastructure of social control. We can't trust the government to have this massive surveillance lockdown grid because the government has been involved in lying and telling porkies. Well, the police in Birmingham uh, have definitely lied. The three senior police officers are being investigated for exactly that, for lying about this surveillance scheme. They tried to pass it off as a as a community safety and crime reduction scheme, which would yeah. which would uh, you know apprehend uh, and, and prevent antisocial behaviour and uh, untaxed vehicles, etc. And it was complete complete nonsense. It, you know, it was, it was purely a spying operation uh, uh, funded by counter terrorism money. So they've been caught out. They've apologised, uh, and but the cameras are still there. And what they what the police are trying to do is to say, well, we'll give everyone uh, a say. We'll, we'll we'll ask them what they think. Yeah. So they're now in the process of putting together information to send out to 90,000 people, to basically saying how cameras are a wonderful tool to catch criminals and keep you safe, yeah. uh, without really mentioning the fact that the reason they were, these particular cameras were put there was to spy on the particular community, yeah. uh, because they're now all suspects. Yeah. You know, that is changing the nature of society. It's saying, you're no longer citizens, you're suspects. And you've all got to be investigated all the time to prove that you're not hiding. Yeah, and we, that's, that's a departure from common law, isn't it? It's, yeah. you know, it, it throws away the presumption of innocence and says, you prove you're not doing anything. Allow yourself to be investigated constantly yeah. and filmed. And I just, the, it's such a beautiful, ironic horror that the police will investigate everything up until their bosses. So uh, anyone's a potential criminal, but when you've got so much evidence of war crimes and problems and British troops doing very naughty things and people lying to take us to war, the police never investigate that and they never investigate the, the whole kind of economy itself. Let's go really big here. Let's, the whole economy itself and who creates the money and who's behind it and all the, the Ponzi schemes which are running. So I, have, I hate to say it, I'm not surprised by this Birmingham stuff. It seems exactly what the police would do and what they want to do and just create this division and fear and we, we know in America in the 1940s after Pearl Harbor was attacked they uh, put all the Japanese people in concentration camps and what we're seeing in Birmingham is just open concentration camps where you it's, can come and go as long as you're documented. It's like a mini Gaza, you know, a, a, a compact. I mean one of the newspaper headlines, uh, it may have been a website, the headline about the Birmingham story was Britain creates CCTV pen for Muslims. Pen. And they've sort of corralled them into this area, which they may have what, cho cho what? chosen for themselves, but it's now surrounded that area with a, a ring fence, a virtual fence of cameras. Yeah. My God.
But it won't stop there. It'll, be, it'll start with that community, and then it'll be it'll be a case of well, that worked. That's a success. Let's let's broaden it out to the whole city, or or let's do it to the Chinese community, or the Somalians, or or poor uh, working class council estates. You know, let's do it there. Let's do it everywhere. You know, it, the, the, way, the way it's heading is that it, there's no limit and, and, and no no checks and balances. It's just going. It's a one way street. It's just more and more surveillance. Yeah. And um, you know, where does it stop? But at the moment, it isn't going to stop because it just keeps going. More and more cameras. I think we'll find um, what we're seeing with the government policies, police policies of super overt and covert control and filming. These are the death throes. This is all good news. These are the death throes of an illegitimate, murderous government having these last desperate attempts to control people and what people do, what people think, what people say, where they walk. So, I, I hate to say this, but all this bad news to me is also good news. There's a silver lining to this cloud because we can take this information and even people who are very skeptical that there is any problem with the world, we can show them this and say, look, this is what the government's doing. Look what Nazi Germany did. Look what Stalinist Russia did. Look what you know, oppressive regimes all around the world do. They, they are police states. And maybe it'll take projects like this, this uh, Project Champion, it was called. They, Project Champion. They've now dropped back because they're hugely embarrassed. Uh, the Birmingham police, but it, it, maybe it takes something like this for people to start to wake up and and realise that we're creating Warsaw ghettos, and we're we're uh, uh, we're, we're putting the the, the the population under so much surveillance that maybe that you know this 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 uh, escalation of surveillance will, will will cause people to wake up and say, well, hang on a minute, is this a good thing? Why why do we need all these cameras? But at the moment, you know, the, one of the biggest problems is the, is the British public because they're um, the general perception is that they, 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 they make the place safe and protect you. Um, but as Charles said earlier, all the evidence, no uh, evidence is totally against that. But we've been fed this line for yeah. the last 20 years. So In fact, the only people who win are those corrupt guys who shook hands with the government and police officials to build and install and get all the contract money for these CCTV cameras. Because in the wake of 9-11, Fear sells. Fear sells even more than sex. So, you know, they can convince people who aren't informed to kind of bring in as much surveillance. Like, it ties into the whole um, DNA database, the kind of naked body scanners, the whole problem reaction solution. So, no, I'm just glad that, Steve, you're, you're campaigning against this. Could you get his t shirt one last time? The whole, I mean, the whole um, surveillance state, it, it's just gone crazy, even more so after 9 11, because it's, you know, terrorism is. Can be used as an excuse. I mean, I read somewhere that there's no surveillance power too intrusive and too unaccountable for our political class, providing the word terrorism is, yeah, is, that's is, it. is invoked. Get that word in there, no problem. Justify. Carte blanche to do anything. And what we're doing is creating this panopticon society where everything is on video, yeah. and uh, whether you like it or not, you have no choice. Yeah. And uh, I don't think we're creating a better society or a safer one. We're just creating fear and mistrust. Yeah. Yeah, and also you treat people like uh, suspects all the time. They will react badly to it. You know, you treat people with less than respect, they'll, they'll react. So, Steve, thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Keep up the good work. Cheers. Cheers.